Hi everyone, my name is Anam. I am a senior front-end and full-stack developer and a Web3.js ambassador. In this video, we're going to create a fully decentralized application. We're going to learn what a decentralized application is and how it differs from a regular centralized application. We're also going to write our own smart contract in the programming language Solidity and deploy it on the blockchain. Additionally, we're going to learn how to install the MetaMask extension on Chrome which is a requirement in order for you to deploy the smart contract. And then finally, we're going to create a React application and use features from Web3.js library to connect to the MetaMask wallet to deploy the smart contract and interact with it. This is a follow-along tutorial, and you do not need to have any prior knowledge of smart contracts, Solidity, or blockchain. However, it will be helpful if you have some basic understanding of React. This is a tutorial for you if you're looking to understand how to use Web3.js and build decentralized applications. I will also include the link to the source code in the description. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a DAP. DAP stands for Decentralized Application. So what's a decentralized application? A decentralized application is a software program that runs on a decentralized network like blockchain. So how is a DAP different? from a centralized application. In a regular application such as Facebook or YouTube, we have a front end that is integrated with the back end. The back end contains the business logic and the database. And it's usually hosted on the cloud. In a decentralized application, however, our back end is running on the blockchain. What it means is that the back end logic is typically implemented using smart contracts. Smart contracts are programs that are stored and run on the blockchain. We're going to write our own smart contract and deploy it on a testnet called Sepholia. Sepholia is one of the testnets used by the Ethereum blockchain. A testnet is a testing environment that mimics the main blockchain network, also known as the mainnet, but uses test cryptocurrency. It is a great way to test new smart contracts without risking real assets. Once the smart contract is deployed, we're going to confirm its deployment on Etherscan. Etherscan is a block explorer and analytics platform for Ethereum. It allows anyone to search and confirm transactions, smart contracts, and other activities occurring on the Ethereum network. I'll show you how to do that later. Once the smart contract has been deployed, we're going to create a React app that will interact with a smart contract using Web3.js. Let's go to remix.ethereum.org. This is an online version of Remix IDE, and it's a powerful tool set for developing, deploying, and debugging and testing Ethereum smart contracts. As you can see, we're in a default workspace. Click on the default workspace and uh, select create a new workspace. Choose the template blank. And we're going to name our workspace Project Dub. Press OK. And here you can see that we have our newly generated workspace. Next thing we're going to do is to create a new file. Name it hello world.sol. Know that sol is file extension for Solidity files. So let's begin writing our smart contract. I will be writing the smart contract in Solidity. Solidity is the programming language for Ethereum smart contracts. We will start with the license identifier under which the code is released. Then we're going to write Pragma, Solidity, zero dot eight dot O. Where Pragma is used to specify the compiler version that the code should be compiled with, here we're using the version that is compatible with version zero dot eight dot O. Next, we're going to write contract hello world 
to declare a contract name Hello World. In Solidity, a contract is a collection of functions and variables. Then we will add string private greeting. To declare a state variable named greeting with the type string. In Solidity, string is used for text data. It is a, it is a dynamic array of bytes, but it is generally used to represent readable text. Private means that the variable greeting can only be accessed and modified by functions within the same contract. This private variable cannot be accessed directly from outside the contract. Let's add the constructor. A constructor is a special function that is executed only once when the contract is deployed to the blockchain. So it's going to be constructor. And inside the constructor, we're going to set the variable greeting, which was previously declared as a private state variable. We're going to assign a default value of hello world, which will be assigned during the contract deployment. Next, we're going to write a function to set greeting. We're going to write the function called set greeting, which takes one parameter underscore greeting of type string memory. So memory is a storage location keyword in Solidity. It is used to specify where the data should be stored. So when you declare a variable with memory, it indicates that the variable's data should be temporarily stored in memory for the duration of the function execution. This means that underscore greeting variable is only going to be stored in memory while we're executing the function set greeting. Since we have declared the function public, it is accessible from outside the contract. This means that we can call it from our React application. The function, we will assign the value of underscore greeting parameter to the private variable greeting, which will effectively update the store greeting message. So the variable greeting, it is stored in storage, while the variable underscore greeting is stored in memory. Next, we will create a function to retrieve the greeting. Function get greeting public view returns string memory. So we declare this function public, making the function accessible from outside the contract. We're going to be calling this function from our React application. The view keyword is used to specify that a function does not modify the contract's state variables, in our case, greeting. It only reads data from the contract. The idea is to only return the value of the greeting, not alter or modify any other state in the contract. And inside the function, we're going to return greeting. So make note that the function get greeting returns a string memory because greeting is a state variable stored in the contract storage. But when you return it from the function, it is copied to memory for the return. So this is it. You have now written your first smart contract. Let's compile this code. We will compile by clicking on this button right here. Now we can see that the compiler has generated build code in the artifacts folder. So now that we have compiled the code, go to Solidity Compiler tab. And here, we're going to find bytecode and ABI. We will need the bytecode and the ABI for deployment of the smart contract. So the next thing we want to do is to deploy the smart contract that we just created. We're going to deploy the contract to the testnet using Web3.js. In order to accomplish this, we will write a deployment script. In order to deploy the smart contract, we need to have the MetaMask Chrome extension installed. To install the MetaMask Chrome extension, you'll go to metamask.io download. 
on this page, we are going to look for the button install MetaMask for Chrome. Click on it. We're going to click on add to Chrome. So once the Chrome extension for MetaMask is installed, you can find it in the list of your extensions and you can click on it and agree to the terms of use. Once you've done that, you'll be given two options. You can either create a new wallet or import an existing one. For this video, I have already imported my test wallet and I will show you how to use this wallet to deploy your smart contract. So we're going to start by creating a complete new React application. And we're going to name our app MyDAP. Next, we're going to go to the root directory of this project that we just created. And here we're going to run npm install. Let's also open this project in VS code. Here, you can see that we have the app.js. We're going to start by running this application. As you can see that we have our application running side by side with the code editor. Next, we're going to remove some of this existing code. And we're going to add some custom CSS styles. So first we're going to create a button and upon click, we're going to connect to the MetaMask wallet. The reason why we're connecting to the MetaMask wallet, it is because we need to make a transaction in order to deploy our smart contract. Next, we're going to implement the event handler that gets called when a user clicks on the button. We're going to call the function connect wallet when the user clicks on the button. Let's implement the function connect wallet. Before we can proceed with the function implementation, we need to install the Web3 NPM package. Once the package is installed, we're going to import the Web3 module in our React code. Let's start with creating a new instance of Web3. We're going to do this inside use effect because we want the initialization to happen the second we start the application. So in this use effect, we're going to first check if MetaMask Chrome extension is installed. We do that by checking if Ethereum object exists on window. If it does, we're going to create a new instance of Web3 where we pass in window.ethereum as a provider. So we need to keep a track of this Web3 instance so we can use it later in connect wallet function. We will do that by creating the Web3 state variable and a function set Web3 that will be used to update the Web3 state variable. Next, we're going to call set Web3 
and we're going to pass in the Web3 instance. We're also going to add some error handling in case MetaMask is not installed. Now we can proceed to implementing the function connect wallet. We're going to start by checking if Web3 instance exists. If Web3. Inside this function, we're going to add a try catch block. We're also going to make this function asynchronous by adding the keyword async. Web3.eth.requestaccounts. So when this promise resolves, it is going to return with a list of the addresses of the connected accounts. We want to have a state where we can store this list of accounts so that we can display it in our React application. We're going to create a state called accounts and we're going to give it an initial value of an empty array. And we're going to set accounts by calling set accounts, where we're going to pass in the list of accounts that we just received. Let's also add some error handling. Once we have successfully connected to MetaMask, we would like to display a message on screen saying successfully connected to MetaMask wallet. And we're also going to display the account details. In this case, we're going to display the first account address in the list of accounts. So let's go ahead and uh, test our solution by clicking on connect to MetaMask wallet. As you can see that a pop-up has appeared, asking us to grant the permission to connect with MetaMask. I'm going to allow it by clicking next. And in the next page, MetaMask is asking our permission to allow the React app to see the address account balance activity and suggest transactions to approve. That's okay. I'm going to click on connect. And there you go, our connection is successful and we can see the address of the connected account on the screen. The next thing we want to do is to conditionally display this button to connect to MetaMask Wallet. And we only want to display the button if the accounts list is empty. So since we have successfully connected to MetaMask, we can create our deploy script. I'm going to start by creating a button and we're going to name the button deploy smart contract. And when we click on this button, we're going to call the function deploy smart contract. So let's go ahead and implement this function. And we're going to need the ABI and the bytecode that got generated when we compiled our smart contract. ABI stands for Application Binary Interface, and it is an interface that defines the ways to interact with a specific smart contract. The ABI is typically in JSON format and it primarily lists the functions exposed by the contract, including their names, parameters, and return types, which allows external applications like our React application to call the contract's functions correctly. The next thing we need is the bytecode. 
A bytecode of a smart contract is the low-level machine-readable representation of the contract's source code that the Ethereum virtual machine can directly execute on the blockchain network. So let's go ahead and copy the bytecode from Remix and paste it in our React application. Now we have the bytecode and the ABI, and we need these to deploy our smart contract. So let's start by creating an instance of a contract object using the Web3.js library. And we'll do that by declaring a variable called myContract, and we're going to assign a value of new web3.eth.contract. And we're going to pass the ABI that we got from Remix. Now we're going to use myContract instance to deploy the smart contract. We will do that by calling the deploy function on my contract, where we're going to pass in bytecode as data. The deploy function returns a transaction object, and it will be assigned to the variable deployer. We're going to use this transaction object called deployer to send the transaction to deploy the smart contract. We'll do that by calling send function on deployer, and we're going to pass an object as an argument in the send function. And this object is going to consist of from, and here we're going to specify the account that we want to send the transaction from. In this case, I'm going to select the first account in the list of accounts. And this is actually optional, but you can also provide the maximum gas limit for this call. Send function returns a promise combined event emitter. And we're going to listen to the event called receipt and print out the value that we have received in the console. So the receipt object holds the information about the transaction, and we're going to print out the contract address from the receipt object. We're also going to listen to the error event and log the error so we know when something's gone wrong. This is it. We have now completed our deploy script. Let's go ahead and run this script. I'm going to click on deploy smart contracts. And in doing so, MetaMask is now providing us with some information about how much it's going to cost us to deploy the contract. And here you have the estimated fee and the maximum fee. I'm going to go ahead and confirm. And let's look at the console logs to see if we managed to get a response. See, there you go. The contract is deployed at address, and this is the location where our smart contract is deployed. Perfect. So we have now deployed our smart contract, but we want to make sure that we can confirm this deployment. And to do that, we're going to go to sefolia.etherscan.io. And here, we're going to search for the address that we've just received. I'm going to copy the address from the console and paste it in the search bar. Click on search. And as you can see, the address was found. And we can see the transaction related to the contract. We see that the transaction occurred two minutes ago, which is correct. So since we have deployed our smart contract successfully, we're going to delete the deploy smart contract button and the script. And now we can start interacting with the smart contract that we just deployed. I have edited out some CSS changes that I made. You'll now see the message that you've successfully connected to MetaMask accounts at the top right corner, and uh, the account details are just below. And the rest of the application is going to take up the remaining space. So now we're going to start by displaying the current greeting, and we're going to get the greeting from the smart contract. We're also going to create a state that will hold the greeting, so current greeting is empty, 
because we haven't set it yet. Let's fetch the greeting from smart contract. We will create a function called get greeting. And inside this function, we're going to create an instance of a contract object. Const my contract is equal to new web3.eth.contract. And we're going to pass the ABI of our smart contract in the constructor. I deleted the ABI that I had in the file earlier, so I'm going to copy it again and paste it in here. And we also need to pass in the contract's address of the smart contract that we just deployed so that we know which contract we're trying to interact with. Now we want to get the greeting. And we're going to do that by calling the function get greeting on the object my contract. So the syntax is await my contract dot methods dot get greeting dot call. Know that calls are free and you will not be charged any transaction fee for making a call. We're going to log the response from the get greeting call in the console output. So this looks good. I'm going to call the function get greeting right after we have connected to MetaMask wallet. Let's rerun the application. In the console output, we can see the result. Hello world. That is our initial greeting that we set when we deployed our smart contract. So now we're going to make a change. Instead of logging the result from get greeting, we're going to update our state greeting by calling set greeting with the value that we just received. So let's refresh the page. And there you go. Now we have our current greeting and it's displaying hello world. So we have now successfully interacted with a smart contract on the blockchain by calling a function on the smart contract. So far, we have only read from the smart contract. Now we're going to write to the contract. But before we can do that, I'm going to refactor some code to make sure that we can reuse our my contract object. So now we have set the my contract object to the state contract. And this way we can access it from a new function that we're going to write. We will start by adding a button and we will give this button a title set greeting. And above this button, we're going to add a heading that says, feel free to set a new greeting. And below it, we're going to add an input field where the users can write the new greeting. We're also going to introduce a state variable called new greeting that will hold the value of the new greeting from the input field. Then when we click on the button send greeting, we want to call a function send greeting transaction. This function is going to be asynchronous. And inside this function, we're going to first check if we have a contract. And if we do, we're going to call a method on this contract. And the syntax is await contract.methods.setGreeting, where we're going to pass in the new greeting as an argument. Dot send. In the send function, we're going to send an object with a property called from, where we define from which account we want to send the transaction from. Next, we're going to print out the transaction receipt in the console output. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to write a new greeting. Hello from my first app. And I'm going to click on set greeting. 
And you can see now that MetaMask is giving us some information about how much this transaction is going to cost us. I'm going to click on confirm and let's see what the console output says. And there you go, we have our transaction receipt here. That's really good. So we want to reset the new greeting once we have sent the transaction. And we'll do that by calling the function set new greeting with an empty string. And right after we have cleared the input field, we're going to call the function get greeting. And we'll do that because we want to get the new greeting from the smart contract and update the UI with the new greeting. And as you can see, after I've refreshed the page, that our current greeting is actually our new greeting, which is hello from my first app. So we have now successfully sent a transaction to the smart contract that we deployed. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and learned a few new things as I have while creating this video. I'm gonna do a recap and go through the key points in this video. We have learned how to write a smart contract in Solidity and compile it and deploy it to the blockchain. We have also learned how to install MetaMask Chrome extension and use it to send transactions. We have learned how to create a React app, install Web3.js, and use the Web3.js library to interact and communicate with the smart contract that we deployed. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful for your Web3 development journey. And if you have any questions or would like to see more content like this, please leave a comment below. You can also find more information about me on anum.io, anum.io. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials. You can also join the Web3.js Discord channel and follow Web3 underscore JS on Twitter for more updates. All the links are provided in the description below.